if you are a first time visitor to my video please subscribe to my channel i'll be posting a lot of videos on job search strategies linkedin optimization work from home options in the upcoming videos so click subscribe and click the bell button so that you get the notification how to understand salary breakup salary structure and salary components for many of us terms like CTC, basic salary, gross salary, allowance, reimbursements, tax deductions, provident fund, insurance. These are often create confusion for employees. In this video, we have attempted to explain all the terms associated with the salary in order to make it very simpler for you. CTC when we say CTC, it is a cost to company. It is the total amount a company spends to an employee, whether it can be direct or indirect. This is the total salary package of the employee. This includes monthly components such as basic pay, various allowances, reimbursements and annual components such as graduate, annual variable pay, and annual bonus. It is not the amount of take-home salary. Many components does not receive as part of take-home salary. So, CTC means gross salary plus your PF plus graduate. By the way, this is J.S. Kumar from jskumar.com. I'm a career coach and a job search advisor. I help professionals land in amazing jobs. As a career coach, I have the honor of being able to help numerous ambitious corporate professionals just like you to land their dream job offers. And if this is something you are interested in working with me one on one basis, please click the description below and reach out to jskumar.com. Now, Let's break this CTC into various components. Component number one, basic salary. It is the base income of an individual. It is a fixed part of one's compensation package. It depends on the employee's designation and industry in which the employee works. Component number two, gross salary this amount is calculated by one's basic salary and allowances minus taxes and other deductions this involves basic salary house rent allowance special allowance conveyance allowance educational allowance medical allowance leave travel allowance etc this also involves other components such as the salary arrears, remuneration or fee overtime payment and performance related cash awards. Benefits like rent for accommodation, electricity, fuel charges and water. Allowances such as the travel allowance, medical allowance, leave travel allowance is also part of this. Component number three, net salary or take home salary. This is obtained after deducting income tax at source that is called TDS and other deductions as per company policy. So that means net salary equals basic salary plus HRA plus allowances minus income tax minus employees provident fund minus professional tax component number four allowances this is the amount received by the employee for meeting service related requirements it is provided in addition to the basic salary but vary from company to company and even industry to industry there are four types of allowances. Number one, HRA. 
Number 2. LTA that is leave travel allowance. Number 3. Conveyance allowance. And number 4. Dearness allowance. So what is house rent allowance? This is the amount paid out to employees by companies for expenses related to rented accommodation. Leave travel allowances. This is provided by the company to cover domestic travel expenses. This does not include the expenses for food and accommodation. But this is again varies from companies to companies. Conveyance allowance. It is provided to employees to meet travel expenses from residence to work. Dearness allowance. A living allowance paid to employees to tackle the effects of inflation. This is applicable to government employee, public sector employees and pensioners only. Other such allowances which you are already familiar are the special allowance, medical allowance and incentives. Reimbursements. This includes medical treatments, phone bills, newspaper bills, etc. These are also involves amount not received in the salary but on submission of the bills. Generally, there is an upper limit for every category. Employer Provident Fund This is an investment both by the employer and the employee each month. The lump sum amount of which acts as an employee's retirement benefit scheme. Provident Fund contribution is mandatory either if the following. Case 1. Basic salary less than 15,000 and case 2 basic salary greater than 15,000. Now let's see public provident fund in detail. The PPF account or public provident fund scheme is one of the most popular long-term saving income investment products mainly due to its combination of safety, returns and tax savings. Now, why is the PPF so popular? It is popular because it is one of the safest investment products. That is, the government of India guarantees your investments in the fund. The interest rate is set by the government every quarter. That is, from 1st April to 30th June 2020 has been fixed at 7.1%. PPF scores over many other investment options mainly because your investment is tax exempt under Section 80C of the Income Tax Act and the returns from PPF are also not taxable. Now let's get into understanding Form 16, Graduity, Life Insurance and Health Insurance. Graduity. This is received by an employee from the employer for the services offered by the employee upon leaving the job. He can receive only after 5 years and it is deducted by the employer every year. Life Insurance and Health Insurance. It is by the employer and it is always included in the CTC. It is deducted while calculating your take-home salary. Form 16 is a certificate issued under Section 203 of the Income Tax Act for tax deducted at source from income under the head salary. It is issued on deduction of tax by the employer from an employee's salary and deposit of the same with the government. Now let's get into the understanding of income tax related to salary income and salary components. The tax levied on one's personal income is called income tax. 
Usually, an employee gets his salary after the tax deduction by the employer. This process is called as tax deduction at source, popularly known as TDS. The deducted tax amount is paid to the government by the company. Professional tax Professional tax is a tax charged by the state government in order to let an individual practice a certain profession. The maximum amount payable per year is rupees 2500. It depends on one's monthly salary and also on the state in which one works. The professional tax levied varies from state to state in India. Now, how to calculate your take-home salary? We have provided some easy steps to help you calculate your take-home salary, also known as enhanced salary or net salary. In order to calculate take-home salary, subtract the income tax, provident fund and professional tax from the gross salary. Step 1. Calculate gross salary. So, gross salary equals CTC minus EPF plus graduate. Step 2. Calculate taxable income. That is, taxable income equals income minus deductions. In order to determine the part of your income that is taxable, subtract allowances, professional tax, medical bills, medical insurance, tax saving investments if any and other deductions from your gross salary. To calculate income tax, include income from all sources such as salary, house property, capital gains, income from any business or profession and other sources. Now how to calculate deductions? Number 1. HRA. The HRA is the total amount received as the HRA from the employer in the financial year. This is the actual rent paid in the year minus 10% of the basic salary in the year. It will be 50% of the annual basic salary if you are staying in a metro city or 40% of the annual basic salary if you are staying in a non-metro city. Step 3. Calculate income tax. Once you have taxable income, you can easily calculate income tax by referring to the income tax lab and rates provided below. The income tax rate is levied based on a slab system under which individuals pay taxes at different rates basis their income slab. Income tax slabs are revised every year during the budget keeping in mind the individual taxpayers. According to the budget announcements for the financial year 2019 and 20, tax slab for male and female Indian resident individuals below 60 years of age is as follows. But with a new budget announced on February 2, 2020, taxpayers can now choose between the current and new tax regime. Individual taxpayers have a choice between the current tax regime with existing income tax deductions and exemptions or the new income tax regime with lower tax rates and fewer exemptions. As proposed in the budget 2020-2021, the new tax regime offers slashed income tax rates to the lower the amount of tax paid, simultaneously eliminating certain deductions and exceptions. As per the revised tax regime, tax slab for individuals below 60 years of age is as shown. The amount of tax will be subject to 4% education and health says. A taxpayer choosing the new tax regime will have to give up the following deductions and exemptions. Now let's take an example to understand how to calculate take home salary. 
assume Mira CTC is 16 lakhs. Other salary components of her salary structure are as mentioned below. Now the thing it's to be noted is this is up to Mira to decide how much she wants to invest and claim under section 80C. The maximum deduction possible is 150,000. EPF amount also comes under section 80C. We have assumed that Mira pays rupees 30,000 per month as her rent. Dearness allowance is assumed to be zero because Mira is a private sector employee. Now step 3 calculate income tax based on the slab rates announced in the financial year 2019 to 2020. So the net tax is given as below. Step 4 calculating in hand or take home salary. So this is the take home salary that means gross salary minus income tax plus professional tax so this is a figure which is actually a take home salary for mira now if you have any questions on the ctc salary structure or any other salary components please comment below this video to answer those queries thanks for watching this video i will see you in the next video